Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. About four days ago, on day number 106, on day number 106, we began the topic of absolute value inequality. Today is our fifth video in a series of 15 videos. Today is our lesson number 110. Problem for the black problem for today is already on the blackboard. It says absolute value of 5a minus 3 we are told has to be less than 7. Our job is to figure out what are the allowable values for x so that this scenario holds so that the absolute value of 5a minus 3 is less than 7. Before we actually look at the inequality, let's look at the simple scenario first. Let's look at, look at the simple scenario first. Let's, let's first understand what would happen if we had equality here. When would this be true? Well, absolute value of 5a minus 3 would be equal to 7 when either, either 5a minus 3 is equal to negative 7 or 5a minus 7, 5a minus 3, 5a minus 3 is equal to positive 7. Why? Because the absolute value of negative 7 is 7 and absolute value of positive 7. That's very simple enough. We can leave it like this. We're not interested in the value of we're not interested in the value of a uh, 5a minus 3. We're not interested in what 5a minus 3 uh, can be. We have to find out the value of a. Let's solve for it. Add 3 to both sides. 3 drops out and 5a equals negative 7 and a positive 3. That's going to give us negative 4, which means a equals negative 4 fifth. Negative 4 fifth. Similarly here we add 3 to both sides. 3 drops out and 5a equals 10 and a equals 2. These are these are our demarcation points. All the action is going to take place around these two points. Let's put this on a number line. Here is our 0, here is going to be a negative 4 4 fifth and here is going to be our positive 2. These are the allowable value, these are the allowable values of A. If, if we were dealing with equality, we are not dealing with equality here, we are dealing with inequality, we are told that it has to be less than 7. This is where the things are going to get tricky, pay very close attention, see what happens. What we have to understand now is, when, when would this quantity be less, absolute value of this quantity, absolute value of this quantity has to be less than 7. I want you to look at this scenario here. There is 0, there is negative 7, there is positive 7. Now we are dealing with this quantity as a whole. Let's think of this as an x. If we are told that the absolute value of x is less than 7, can x be, can x be negative 10? Can x be negative 10? That's the question. Can it be 10, negative 10? Well, if you take the absolute value of x, absolute value of 10 is 10, and 10 is not less than 7. It has to be less than 7. x cannot be 10. Can x be, can x be negative 4? Absolute value of x has to be, absolute value of negative 4 is going to be 4, and 4 is less than 7. Which means, in order for the absolute value of x to be less than 7, x, whatever it is, has to be greater than negative 7, all the way up to 0. It cannot go, the value of x has to be to the, left of, neg uh, to the right of negative 7, it cannot go below negative 7. The positive part actually is very straightforward. The positive part is very straightforward. The absolute value of x is less than 7, which means x cannot be more than 7. X, obviously x cannot be 12. X cannot be 12 because the absolute value of 12 is 12, and 12 is not less than 4. We are told that less than 7. We are told that it has to 12 is not less than 7. We are told that it has to be less than 7. Obviously, it cannot go there. It has to fall between negative 7 and positive 7. It has to fall between negative 7 and positive 7. But what, you, what we need to understand here is that what we are showing here are the allowable values, allowable values of 5a minus 3, this quantity, 5a minus 3, which is what we are calling x. Question is, how do we make a transition from here to the a itself? How do we go from here to the A itself is what we are trying to understand. And that's where, that's where the trick part comes into it. The absolute value of 5A minus 3, since we are told, is less than 7, which means that tells us, let's put it here, 
absolute value of 5a minus 3 is less than 7, that tells us that either, either 5a minus 3 has to be greater than negative 7, you see, it has to be greater than negative 7, or 5a minus 3 has to be less than positive 7. It has to be either greater than negative 7, this quantity 5a minus 3, or it has to be less than positive 7. It has to lie from it has to lie between negative 7 and a positive 7. The value of 5a minus 3, the value of 5a minus 3 has to lie between negative 7 and a positive 7. The way we show that, the fact that it has to lie between negative 7 and positive 7 is that we, we say that 5a minus 3, whatever it is, it's got to be either more than negative 7 or it has to be less than positive 7. And then we solve for it. And when we solve for it, you will see that we'll get these values. Do it again. We just did it. We're going to do it again. Uh, 3 to both sides. 3 cancels out. And 5a equals negative 4. And a equals... Well, actually, except here, it's not equal to. That's the whole point. That's the whole point. It's no longer equal to. a. 5a has to be more than negative 4. And therefore, a has to be negative 4. More than negative 4 fifth. And similarly here, add 3 to both sides. 3 is going to drop out. And 5a is less than 10. Which tells us that a is less than 2. Right here. And... Since we do not have an equal sign here, since we do not have an equal sign, we cannot include the end point here. So we have to have an open circle here. We have to have an open circle here. And the allowable values of A are here. Between negative 4 fifth and a positive 2, these are the allowable values of A. A can be any value it wants to be between negative 4 fifth and positive 2. It cannot be the, it cannot be the values at the end point. It cannot be negative 4 fifth exactly. It cannot be positive 2. It has to be more than negative 4 fifth and less than positive 2. And that's your solution set. The solution to this inequality, let's erase this part now. If somebody asks us to show the solution to this inequality on a number line, that's the answer right here. This part that we did here was the intermediate step. It was the intermediate step. It was a transition. This part shows us the allowable values of this quantity, 5a minus 3. And once we figure out that, uh, that the 5a minus 3 is allowed to be between negative 7 and positive 7, and when we work through it, it finally translates to the fact that in order for this to be true, in order for the value of 5a minus 3 to be between negative 7 and positive 7, a would have to be either more than 4 fifth, negative, a would have to be more than negative 4 fifth, or a would have to be less than 2. This is, a would have to be less than 2. Right here, it has to be between 2 and a negative 4 fifth. That's our solution. Well, tell you what, why don't we take a couple of examples and, and see if this actually holds. I'm going to erase this part. We no longer this, we need the transition part here. For example, it has to be between negative 4 fifth and a 2. Negative 1, A equals to negative 1, won't work. It won't work. Why? Because negative 1, negative 1, Negative 1 is same as negative 5 fifth. Negative 5 fifth is to the left of it. Negative 1 is right here. It's outside it. It won't work. Negative 1 is outside the range. It, it, will, it won't work. We'll show here. 5 minus a 1 minus a 3, which is negative 5 and a negative 3, absolute value of this quantity. Absolute value of negative 8 is 8, and 8 is not less than 7. As you can see, it does not work. Similarly, Similarly, if we go to the left, to, to the right of this thing, a equal to positive 3, a equal to positive 3, will not work. It will not work because it's outside the range. 5 times 3, minus 3, which is 15 minus 3, absolute value of it, absolute value of 12 is 12 and 12 is not less than 7. It has to be less it has to be less than 7. But anything that falls between negative 4 fifth and a 2, anything that falls between a negative 4 fifth and a 2 would work. For example, let's look at an example that would work. For example, a equals to 1 and 3 fifth, how about that? A equals 1 and 3 fifth, 1 and 3 fifth will be somewhere here between 1 and 2. Will work. We'll show that it will work. Let's do it here. 
one and three fifth, one and three fifth is the same as eight and fifth. So here we have five, five a, five a, which is eight and three fifth minus three. Five cancel out. Eight minus three is five. We take an absolute value of it. Absolute value of five is five, and that is less than seven. You see, it does work. We could have, instead of taking something complicated like a equal to one and three fifth, we could have taken something simple. For example, we could have shown that a, a equals to one works. A equals to one would work. A equals to one implies that five times one minus three, we take the absolute value of it. Five times one is five. Five, five times one is five minus three is two. Absolute value of two is two, which is less than seven. That works, this works. So any value that falls between negative four fifth and a positive two would do the job. Anything that falls outside will not do the job as we show a couple of examples, as we just showed a couple of examples of both of the scenarios. We looked at two values that did work right here and the two values we saw earlier that were outside the range. The allowable range is from negative four fifth to positive two. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.